Hey, hello everyone. It's uh, Glenn Wittenberg from uh, MySip Solutions. Um, today, I uh, just got in via FedEx a new package of my uh, Mini ITX uh, that I'm going to install uh, PFSense on uh, here in the next uh, couple days. Do a lot of testing on it as well. Um, I think it's going to be a really nice box for me. Um, let's go over here real quick. I'll show you what I ordered. Um, you can see right there, it's the I uh, got it off of uh, MI txpc.com and it's uh, their model number is the EKGBJ1900 M350 so it's got the uh, M350 case and uh, um, it's got the uh, Intel Celeron J1900 quad core with the sock on it um, it comes with 2 gig I had them put another 2 in it so I got 4 gig to play with um, so that's kind of nice and it's got a couple uh, Ethernet uh, jacks in it they're, they're just real tech um, they're not Intel, so you know, I'm not sure about the throughput on it, but uh, you know, I'll find out when I do some testing on it as well. So um, it's nice. It's uh, very low power. It's supposed to be about 15 watts max power drain. Um, I do have a meter uh, ordered, uh, but that's not in yet. So when that comes in, I'll be able to uh, to test that. Um, it's fanless. Um, it's going to have no moving parts in it. Um, so you know, again, super super quiet. So that's kind of cool. And I got some other items for it here as well. Um, let's see, I got some extra extra cables here um, uh, to do some uh, hooking up of the uh, of the router to uh, the switches and whatnot. So I did get a, um, a Patriot a Blaze 60 gig drive for it as well, SSD. Um, I also have a USB that I'm going to, uh, to play with it as well. I thought first I would just use the uh, USB and uh, do a driverless system and you can see here I've got uh, this is the uh, PNY if I can find it here it is it's the PNY it's 128 gig and it is a USB 3 um, it's a really nice drive very fast um, I've got a lot of good throughput on it so we're gonna scope that out as well so I'll probably do it in a diskless first and then uh, uh, we'll you know put PFSense on the uh, on the SSD and go from there as well. So, I also have uh, <clears throat> a couple of uh, switches we're going to use. Um, I just bought this brand new one here. I haven't even unboxed it yet either. Uh, it's just a TrendNet 8 port gigabit switch. Um, so, that's kind of nice. And then I got a couple switches here, as you can see. Let me turn my light on there. There we go. And maybe. There we go. It's not too bad, I guess. Um, so, the top one is a five port poe gigabit and the bottom one is the same model that's in that box over there which is an eight port non-poe gigabit switch so um i'll be uh you know putting the router on you know a switch on each side of the router right the land side the land side and i'll put a couple devices on each side to do some testing as well <clears throat> and uh oh i got a SATA cable here for it too i didn't know if i had an extra SATA cable laying around while I was at the store, so I figured I'd just grab one just in case. Got a nice short one uh, because we got a small box, right? So I'm basically going to put my uh, NAS slash Plex server slash Asterix box um, on one end uh, of the router, uh, probably the uh, uh, the WAN side, and then on the LAN side, I'll just use my PC here as well. Um, you can see that there. So. Um, my PC has a, a Realtek card built onto the motherboard. It's an MSI board. Uh, it's got a, a quad core i5 in it, 16 gig of RAM, uh, SSD with uh, a three 500 WD Blues, uh, 500 gig WD Blues, and a RAID. So I got one, one and a half gig on that, and a RAID zero. And then uh, this is a nice little box here, right? Um, I've got a couple. Ethernet's in the back of that. Uh, one is the add-on card. It's a TP-Link, um, and then the other one is built on, and it's a Qualcomm uh, on that one. So, uh, and again, this is a uh, an i5, uh, you know, quad core, 16 gig of RAM, the whole nine yards. This has a, a Samsung 120 gig SSD as the uh, uh, boot, um, uh, the boot drive in it, and then I've also got four Western Digital three terabyte drives and a ZFS uh, uh, RAID mirrored setup. So it's kind of like a uh, like a RAID 10 in that uh, for that. So um, so uh, I'm having really good luck with that box. So I, I love that. So um, when I copy now from my PC over to my NAS, 
um, I'm getting 113 uh, megabytes right uh, through Windows using the uh, SMB uh, SMB Samba uh, just regular Windows copy over on that so that's gonna be kind of my benchmark so I would like to get that through the router and then you know measure you know what I'm gonna have for uh, CPU utilization uh, memory usage uh, stuff like that you know see if we can kind of max this thing out see what we can get out of this and again it's just the uh, J1900 uh, Intel quad core uh, on that's a Celeron chip so we'll see see how much luck I have so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing unboxed and uh, opened up and uh, we'll be back to take a look at it all right so <clears throat> cracked open the box um, very little foam in there right no big deal um, had another box in there along with the packing slip um, as you can see there so uh, it's got no hard drive in it which we know uh, pretty pretty basic doesn't tell us a lot there it says it only has two gig there but uh, I called them up oh there it is system memory four gig yeah they did substitute it so that's nice because I called them up the day before it shipped after I ordered it with two gig and I had them add another gig and uh, they made it uh, to the system and got it in there and still shipped out the day it was supposed to so that was really cool uh, the guys are really pleasant to speak with over there at uh, MITx uh, PC so um, we'll just see how this works. So let's uh, go ahead and open this up maybe. There we go. And it looks like the uh, packing uh, is pretty good there, right? It's all packed in styrofoam, so it's uh, not getting damaged. Let's pull some stuff out of here. Oh, look, it came with SATA cables. I guess uh, wasted a dollar. I probably got 1,500 SATA cables in a, in a box in the other room, but uh, I was at the store, so I got that extra one. And it's got the Pico PSU. I think it's just the 80 watt. Um, so here's the uh, AC cord for that. These are SATA, right? Yep, these are SATA. Okay, cool. Uh, what do we got here? Here's a couple, uh, some screws, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if that's for the hard drive. I should have a uh, one mounting rail inside of it, <coughs> even though it doesn't have a hard drive. <coughs> here's the uh, Pico PSU for it. And let's go ahead and this out. There we go. Alright, so now we have this. Let's see if I can pull it out of the out of the bag here with my hand. There we go. Alright, so let's check this baby out. Let's make it some better light in here. So you can see there um, it's got no label on the front. Pretty pretty generic. Um, it's a heavy little dude. Nice aluminum uh, case. That's all vented top bottom sides so uh, it's supposed to stay pretty cool again this is the uh, m350 case so take a look at the bottom of it um, it's got some different holes and stuff in here where you can do brackets and mount it to the wall and whatnot um, I'm not going to be doing that it's just going to be sitting on a desk so let's roll it over and see what we got here and there's the back um, we got your uh, audio of course we got four USB 3.0's uh, two Realtek uh, Ethernet. Um, we've got your uh, VGA uh, DVI, and we got a couple serials along with some PS2s in there as well for keyboard and mouse. If we want to use that, so pretty nice. There's where the uh, power goes into, and it's also got another hole in here you can punch out right up here and do a uh, Wi-Fi if you want to do that as well. Um, I'm not going for that option. So I did read the uh, manual on the case. Um, few days ago when I first ordered this and I know that uh, um, you can pull this screw out right up here pop the case off then you can get to the tabs uh, for the front cover and you can pop the front cover off and there's uh, two more USB ports in the front uh, so you can put like your USB stick uh, in the port and snap the cover back on and it stays hidden so again you can use this as a true diskless uh, station and uh, you know have something to boot off some sort of flash media uh, on there as well so Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to take the, the top off of this and uh, we'll do a quick inspection. Well, I got the cover off of it. Um, again, it was uh, pretty simplistic. I just pulled that uh, little screw um, out of the back there and uh, slid the case back about a quarter of an inch and then it just kind of wiggled right off the top. So uh, nice uh, little clean build. Looks like the uh, little cable management there looks like they did a really good job. Um, again, this is, um, 
Let's see here if we got the memory in there, right? Let's take a look here. So, yep, we got a 4 gig stick in there. That's really nice. And here's my uh, mounting rail for my hard drive. Again, you can put two rails in this if you like. Um, each rail can hold a two and a half inch drive, um, or they can hold uh, a couple, I think it's 40 millimeter fans in here as well. Again, I'm just going all fanless, uh, no moving parts, and uh, which this is an SSD, so should keep it uh, nice and cool. Got a heat sink on there pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and go through the uh, manual. It did come with a little manual for the motherboard. I'll show that to you here. Again, it's got that uh, a gigabit uh, board on it. Uh, ultra durable. So I'm going to go ahead and spend some time on this. I'm really not interested in any of the Windows drivers or setup or anything. I'm just going to be running the PFSense based on BSD. So it's kind of where I'm at. Do a little research. Get this thing booted up. Um, my understanding of this board, uh, doing a little reading, is that uh, you know, to get it to work off of the uh, USB and everything else, they had some problems with the earlier BIOSes. Um, uh, the F1 was really bad. People were successful with the F2. Um, I personally have worked on a motherboard, uh, this same model, in a different setup. And uh, it had the F3 on it, and I did not have any problems at all uh, with it. Um, so, you know, booting off of external... USB CD-ROM or USB sticks, etc. So, um, if this doesn't have at least the F3 on it, um, I will bring it up to version F3 for the BIOS. And uh, I know they got the F4 out. Um, that's been only been out like a couple months. And I don't think that's really available via the Windows download that they kind of recommend to flash your BIOS. But you got to have Windows on it, and you know you can't really do it from inside the BIOS. Um, or you can download. The different versions uh, on a stick, and then flash it that way on a you know on an MS DOS type deal. So, um, but again, I'm not going to use the F4. Um, if it's got F3 on it, I'm just going to leave it that way. If it's got F4, I'll leave it. But if not, I won't be upgrading it to F4. So, okay. So again, it's going to go to the dock. Uh, plug the power in, whatnot. Let me pull the tab right there. That's how we get the front cover off. And see if I can get this thing booted up. Uh, I know on that last board uh, that I worked on that was this model, um, I had to go into the uh, BIOS and turn on legacy support. Uh, so I'll play around with that a little bit and uh, see if this USB stick that I got is, is any different or not. Um, and I never put it in the front one, um, the USB, I put it in uh, the back. Uh, it was just a temporary deal uh, to get things up and running and booted up. And then once we got everything loaded on it, um, we didn't need a USB stick anymore. So. That's it. And uh, come back when we so, have some more news. Yeah. Took this uh, small thin point screwdriver here and uh, just stuck it in on the side and pushed the two tabs out and then just pulled the front cover off. Um, so you can see that I put my uh, that USB 3.0 PNY 128 gig stick in there. Um, and I had forgotten that I had already uh, threw an image on there of uh, PFSense uh, Nano. Uh, BSD, BSD Nano, whatever it's called, it's Nano BSD, and uh, you know, which is a flash image of that. So I went ahead and imaged that already, and uh, um, I forgot about that. So I put it on there, uh, turned the uh, press power button, hooked the power supply, turned the power button on, and it came up into the uh, uh, BIOS, uh, UEFI uh, BIOS settings. So I went ahead and went into, uh, you can see it here, went into the BIOS. I just had to make a couple changes there. I just went into the boot. I didn't set anything else, right? I just turned full screen logo off. I disabled that because I didn't want to see their logo. I want to see the messages that come up. And then the uh, UEFI was first and the PNY was second. I just changed the boot priority and then save and exit. And uh, you can So now we don't see the big graphical logo there, the messages there, and as you can see, um, we are booting up into uh, PFSense already, so um, right off the USB. So that was really, really uh, quick. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me press under there, get rid of that. So I'm probably going to go ahead and leave it as the stick for now, 
and I might uh, I'm going to throw in the hard drive so I can boot off either the uh, SSD uh, or the uh, USB stick and then I'm going to load uh, probably a Windows uh, on the uh, on the SSD to begin with just so I can see if this could be a replacement uh, computer and you know what kind of you know what, what can I expect out of it as far as you know is it going to run basic office apps how fast are things going to load um, you know I'll put maybe the new Photoshop on it see what happens with that you know I don't have a lot of RAM so I know that's going to be a problem uh, with something you know intense like that uh, but I can at least get some readings on the CPU and uh, just kind of play with that a little bit because I might use this for um, to replace some of the bigger tower machines uh, in the house here uh, with some of these thin clients that would use low power uh, and have no moving parts in them so um, that will be pretty cool so let's see if PF Sense boots up here starting firewall and it shouldn't even ask me to reconfigure it because it's already got a uh, REO on it yeah so it's got a real tech driver in there so I found it and it was already set up to do DHCP. I don't have any Ethernet cables plugged into it. So as you can see here, it didn't give us the uh, IP address on that interface. And I had nothing set up for the LAN because when I installed this image and I booted it up for the first time, it was on a uh, PC with only one network card in it. So uh, I just wanted to see if the image would work and boot up, and it did. And uh, uh, so then when I stuck it in here, boom, booted right up. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let me do a little bit more work here get some stuff together uh, so far I'm really pleased um, oh also on another note the BIOS was already at F4 so uh, that BIOS had just come out too uh, from what I remember just a month or two ago and uh, so this is like a, a brand new board from those guys I guess uh, it's got the F4 in it so maybe that's why I'm not having any of the uh, problems that uh, I'm reading on the forums of um, you know other people having with the older BIOSes and not getting it to boot off of uh, USB sticks and whatnot uh, this was a slam dunk so I'm very pleased with that so I'm really happy uh, that they that they got their stuff straight I think it was gigabit right got their stuff straight and worked out their BIOS issue so hats off all right so um, I went ahead and mounted the SSD to the uh, drive carrier here it's a pretty close fit but um, I think uh, everything is on there without it being uh, too too awfully stressed they put little risers you can see right there little tiny dimples on the mount holes to keep the SSD just far enough away uh, so all the uh, you know, the power and the SATA cable uh, plug in nicely of course I plugged everything in first and then screwed it on uh, to the carrier with the supplied screws they gave me which recess in so that's kind of nice um, also I went ahead and uh, just zip tied up this cable a little bit so I got to spin it around and put it in um, zero There's zero and one they've only given us two uh, something I didn't really catch in the uh, uh, in the specs of this board is it looks like these are just SATA 2 not SATA 3 um, so you know not a big deal um, for this um, but uh, just something to kind of keep aware of I don't know what the big difference is between I think SATA 2 has the capacity of basically flooding an SSD anyway so not really sure what all that's about um, I know all my other boards right now have SATA 3's on them so I'll do some disk IO tests on this and uh, see but then I really don't have anything to compare this drive to because I don't have another drive in a SATA 3 one so I'd have to pull this back out and you know stick it in my PC or something like that to do the same test and uh, see if it, uh, you know, I guess a better throughput or something. Not real concerned. It's a little tiny mini PC, so I'm not going to expect, you know, world class workstation performance out of it or anything. But uh, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead then and uh, uh, mount this back in, plug in the cable, and we'll boot it back up again, uh, you know, and see what we got uh, for the SSD and the BIOS and uh, go from there. Things are going pretty well uh, so far. I, uh, let's go ahead and show you this here. Um, I got the uh, hard drive uh, bracket put back in, two screws on the top, and it, uh, it's got like an L bracket that snaps in there first, and you lay it down here and put the screws in. Again, so everything's uh, mounted up, uh, zip tied up that SATA cable a little bit, kind of do a little cable management there. 
uh, everything seems to be uh, really well. I checked all to make sure everything was plugged in. The PS, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Pico PSU, uh, my four uh, SATA cable underneath here, port zero and port one. Um, turned it back on. It uh, booted right up to the USB stick again. So I went into the BIOS. Let's see here. And I went into uh, to boot and I set the Patriot Blaze as the first one and disabled all the other ones since it doesn't have an OS on it it would just go to the next one so and just to make sure you went down to uh, advanced and you go to the IDE configuration and uh, you can see here um, I see the uh, there it is well you can't arrow down to it but the uh, SATA port 0 Patriot Blaze 60 gig so pretty decent there so you know, I'm gonna have to uh, get a soda pop here think about it and uh, see if I'm going to just go ahead and drop PFSense on here right away, or maybe put Windows on there and do a dual boot action for a little bit, um, just to play with. So I know when I get into production, um, PFSense will be on the uh, SSD. Uh, that's gonna be my primary deal, and it's gonna be a, a router. So it's not gonna be a workstation, but I wanna check it out anyway. So there it is, waiting for an OS, uh, ready to go. Well, this has uh, been fairly easy. I decided to go ahead and put uh, PFSense on the SSD uh, for now and play with that. I can always put Windows on it later, but I'm looking forward to uh, uh, testing uh, this you know, chipset, uh, CPU, and uh, uh, Ethernet controllers uh, in PFSense, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what I did was I just removed the uh, USB 3.0 out of here. I have a, a USB CD, DVD, and ASUS drive. I just plugged it in the back. Um, I already had an ISO of uh, PFSense 2.2.4 uh, from the last install I did uh, what, three, four weeks ago. So I slipped that in there, booted it up. Again, just went into the uh, boot priority, made sure that was number one. Uh, everything else was disabled. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not everything else disabled, but uh, that was number one, and then my SSD was number two. Um, went ahead and uh, booted up, uh, just chose the simple install, used the whole hard drive. Uh, really slow when it got to 38%. Um, had to wait around for, for several, several minutes. Uh, then it took off again and uh, finished the install. So um, now that I have this unplugged, we'll just go ahead and turn this back on. And I don't have any uh, Ethernet cables or anything plugged into it yet. I'm just uh, making sure this whole thing comes up nice for us. And then I'll go ahead and button up the case and everything, put the faceplate back on, and uh, then we'll all configure uh, the LAN and the WAN. So here we go. You see there, it's, uh, it's fairly fast on the boot. I can definitely live with that. All right, it's ready to go. One and two, great, all right. So uh, let me go ahead and button this thing back up. And uh, I've already got my switches set up here. I'm gonna use uh, one for the WAN, one for the LAN. Got a couple cables in them already. I just gotta plug this one in underneath the desk. And then I'm going to use my PC over here that I have for the land side and then I'm going to stick this uh, Sense 7 Asterix Plex NAS box uh, on the WAN side and uh, we can do some uh, some testing that way so cool thanks alrighty I have a, a base config here um, brought it up and I did a DHCP on the WAN which is to uh, this port here plugged into this switch with the green cable the white cable on the NAS or on the WAN side is uh, my NAS over here and uh, this yellow cable then hooks in to this switch which then pulls off the internet um, well not necessarily the there's another router downstairs which is on 192.168.10 and that one is a uh, .10.1 so it gave me a DHCP on that network of uh, 
192.168.114. And then uh, the LAN side, I just left the default 192.168.1.1, which is this red cable here, which is plugged into this. Uh, again, these are both gig, all three of these are gigabit switches. It's plugged into this PoE five port gigabit switch along with my PC, which I have hard coded as dot one. So if we go over here, and let me just grab a couple deals here. So if you look here, um, this is 192.168.10.100. So that's that NAS on the WAN side. And of course, I'm on my PC on the LAN side. And then uh, let me delete this file here. So which one we're going to grab. So this is the file we're going to grab. It's a uh, 3.2 gig. It's Windows 7 uh, Ultimate. And I'm just going to drag this over. And it's copying at 80 megabytes, not megabits. And if we go over here and look, we can take a look. Our CPU is at 33%, steady there. And our traffic graphs uh, jump up and down a little bit. So uh, they must be super, super sensitive. But as you can see here, uh, we have a really steady line at 80, 81, 79. So it's a, it's a pretty solid line across. Um, keep in mind that um, when I take out the router and I go switch to switch or we're both plugged into the same switch, meaning my NAS and PC, I get a 112, 113 a solid line just like that. So, uh, you know, things slow down a little bit inside. I mean, um, and it's definitely not a CPU thing uh, because we're only at 33% on the CPU when it's running. Uh, so I definitely don't see that being a problem. Um, maybe it's the Realtek uh, network cards inside of uh, the new uh, Mini ITX PFSense router. Uh, but keep in mind, I have a Realtek card on my PC here as well, and uh, that didn't seem to be the problem on that. So, you know, it could be a driver thing, a Windows driver for that Realtek versus what BSD has, uh, PFSense included uh, with their distribution. Uh, not too sure, but. Uh, uh, 80 is not bad, um, you know, so I definitely don't think I got a CPU problem. So I could definitely do uh, gigabit speeds uh, on this if the network would allow me. I don't think I got a problem there with CPU. So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, maybe uh, try to set up some VPN stuff on the outside and the inside and uh, see what I can come up with here uh, on that. See how much overhead that that's going to give me as well. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that, um, but uh, who knows, maybe this weekend. But uh, all in all, I would say uh, pretty darn successful and uh, pretty easy with this box. Again, it was from MITXPC.com. And uh, it's, uh, uh, see if I can get that model number again for us real quick here. Sorry, I got crap everywhere, huh? And it is, it's, uh, I don't know how to get the model number here anywhere on it. I don't see it anyway. But anyway, it's the Gigabyte GHA1900N-D3V. Uh, oh, there it is. It's EKGBJ1900M350. So that is the, uh, that's the model number on their website of uh, MITXPC. Dot com. So if you're interested in this, that's what it is. This is what it has. Again, I put the 4 gig in there. And uh, I bought the SSD myself. Um, I also bought a cable for it. Didn't necessarily need the cable. It came with a couple cables, but the cables are fairly long. So I'm kind of glad I got my short cable uh, while I was at Fry's. And uh, you can see my memory usage is just really, really low. Um, but if I'm going to do, you know, if I'm going to put like snort on here and do any type of, uh, you know, uh, intrusion detection or prevention, uh, you know, some real logging in here, uh, maybe a squid three proxy, stuff like that. So I can do some content filtering and block websites, etc. cetera, then, uh, you know, that could probably come in handy. So uh, definitely worth it. It was the extra 20 bucks for the two gig extra RAM on there. So happy I did that. So uh, CPU seems to be running really cool. It says 26.8 here, but when I go in the BIOS, it's actually running at 50. So I'll have to take a look at this, uh, you know, what this sensor is reading here. 
uh, thermal sensor down here is 26.8 and then again it shows it up here too for the temperature so a little interesting on that I think it's running a lot hotter than 26.8 I put my finger on the uh, heat sink and uh, you know you don't it doesn't burn me but uh, it's fairly warm and I think well over uh, 26.8 Celsius so um, that's it yeah gigabit gigabit LAN WAN so uh, I'm pretty uh, pretty satisfied uh, with my with my build so far and with the way it runs PFSense and again it's a pretty small uh, form factor as you can see next to my you know kind of a small case for my NAS there uh, to begin with but uh, yeah, so you can measure it up here this is just a palm size hub right a little switch so you know not too bad uh, on that you can see the difference there so and then there's my hand on it so all in all uh, pretty happy with the way things turned out there so I update some uh, specs or uh, I'm sorry I update uh, update PFSense do some VPN and whatnot um, I'll try and update this video and uh, give you guys a little bit more info thanks